Tino. Hi. They're my own personal people. The best lady in the whole world. Love you, Kaya. <laughs> Aroha noi, Kotero. Aroha noi. <laughs> This is my place of paradise. Even though you go down, it doesn't matter. You go back up again. If we fix families, then the rest of the courts will be redundant. Our mukapuna will be safer. Our grandparents will be safer. We will all be safer. The streets will be safer. And that is my role. Te kai hono ki te rangi marie. Make the connections so that we can find peace. I'm not here because I have a magnetic personality. I'm here to do a job. My main objective within the Family Violence Court is to make people feel comfortable coming to court that then allows them to have a conversation with a therapeutic judge, Judge Fraser. The Family Violence Court's not just about a judge and a defendant. It's about a community. And it's about a community that provides assistance to defendants and victims. And obviously part of that wraparound is the work that Michelle does. I define her with a term that she gave to me, te kaifakateri, which is a navigator. So Michelle acts essentially as a navigator for defendants who come to court. I am the only person who does this role. My position evolved only because I sat with the people. In evolving, I have learned sometimes keep your mouth shut, sometimes just hold a hand, sometimes give a hug, sometimes just make people feel that I know they are human beings. I don't know if you can imagine what it's like coming here having harmed one of your family and how badly you feel about it, the hurt that the whole family feels about it, but you have made a mistake. You are still worthwhile loving, and you are certainly still worthwhile hugging. The Family Violence Court was established as a recognition of a need to do the work differently and was designed to offer defendants a different way of working through the system Your Honour, he's completed his Stopping Violence program, one that he's thoroughly enjoyed and which I'm sure Your Honour will have a dialogue about. When a defendant pleads guilty, then the therapeutic aspects of the Family Violence Court kick in. What's come out of you doing that program? Uh, well, it's just um, really changed my perspective. We uh, talked a lot about uh, why it happened and we all talked about our own situations and we all had input on each other because it was a group thing and it was quite helpful. The fact that you've uh, worked your way through that lengthy Hoana Waititi trust program uh, is encouraging. Clearly it's got the ability to be compromised by alcohol, doesn't it? Or drugs or whatever it yeah. was. It's, uh, what is the issue? It was alcohol. Yeah. Well, I'm not getting uh, put back in the cell again. What sees you put back in the cell? Uh, breach. So, no alcohol. Yeah, I'm really impressed at the direction this is taking, so well done. All right, look forward to seeing you back here in October. Thank you. She provides cultural, uh, emotional and physical support for defendants and for families and for others. All right, Tama. The role that she plays 
is absolutely invaluable. Go and give your mum a hug. She's waiting for you. Cool. How we ended up in court, we had a bit of a domestic incident. My son hit me. And I hadn't seen him for probably two or three weeks. I would have been devastated if I'd walked out of that court that day without being able to speak to or talk to my son. When we got into Michelle's office on that day, we kind of both looked at each other and then just had a good cry. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have had that chance, hey? We would have just went home, not being able to say whatever we needed to say. I'm insulin-dependent diabetic, so I shouldn't even really be drinking. Uh, but oh, I've started drinking in the last four years. Do you know, our dad was around for a long time, and he passed away four years ago. And uh, um, grief has contributed to our problems, I think. Can only move forward, I guess, from here. I don't plan on falling back into that groove. Um, I love you too, son. Yeah. When I see two people who have been in trouble come together outside the court and weep, hug one another, love one another, then I know that we have done the right job. We are there to help people learn to love again. We are not there for locking people up. Locking people up has never assisted anybody yet. I was a teenager and I joined our local club gang in Greenland. I spent about 25 years in it. Violence was accepted, arguing, abuse. In uh, 2017, my wife passed away, suicide. And at the same time, I had uh, heavy drug addictions. I was stolen in the gangs, drug dealing. I was in and out of prison. I just basically didn't know what to do, and I was just ending up in the family violence court more often because I was taking it out on my children. I've been in court all my life. That was like, go to court, go to jail, come out real thin, go to jail. I got to a point in court where bail was just a fairy tale. For I was supposed to be living, you know, that gangster life. I was in the Auckland District Criminal Court, not the Auckland Family Violence Court, and... One judge said to me, how much rope do we have to give her before she hangs herself? Michelle was the only one there in the courtroom when the judge looked at me and said, give me one good reason why I should give you bail. Michelle asked to speak and she goes, I can vouch for Eva. I still have faith in her to do the right thing. And the judge said, oh, well, at least you have one person in the courthouse. And he said, I'm not giving you bail today for you, Eva. I'm giving you bail because Michelle Kidd seems to think that you have the capacity to make a change in your life, not only for yourself, but for your children. If it wasn't for her, I think I'd probably still be on the streets, thinking I can get bail. I didn't growl there. You always growl. Why are you in court? What are you doing? Who are you with? What, you're pregnant again? It's only because I love you. Close your legs. I've been a year clean now. It's hard, like it really is, but this finally gave me my chance to have my baby, and it's worth giving up drugs for. I'm very proud of you. You just keep going. I love you. I love you too. I do. Many of my older homeless people have passed away. I still miss them. They were good people. They taught me so much. I had had people staying and they were very, very unwell. They had detox from their methylated spirits. Don't know if you've ever had to clean up after somebody who's vomited on methylated spirits. It actually rolls like mercury over the floor. It's very hard to get a hold of, but anyway, you do. This particular night, it was winter time. 
I arrived home from being at work and I thought, where's the furniture? And then I looked out into my garden and the furniture was all pointing towards that corner over there. Everybody had disappeared, but everything on top of the furniture, not one thing was broken. But I thought, what am I going to do? Anyway, they moseyed on down the driveway and I said, what on earth have you done? It's okay, fire, it's okay. We've put the furniture the bench way. <laughs> and that was what they did, all the way to Cape Rienga. I said, I'm not ready to go there yet. So you just bench it right back in. This is the gentleman who used to stay in the whare and the put the furniture out. This artwork here is of his demons. He has the kaiaha or the patu and he is beating his demons just to give him peace. He asked me to put that picture of myself so that when his demons came out, I would fire my crossbow and I would kill them. Now, when you go to this other beautiful artwork over here, his feathers are far more upright. That was how he wanted to be. So, he moyana. Moi mai ra, moi mai ra, moi mai ra. Moi mai ra te, te moi ro. This is the older generation and the amazing gifts they gifted me. How could you not say what beautiful people we all are? If I was to say what was the turnaround point that changed my life was the Family Domestic Violence Court. You know, because Judge Fraser gave me that grace and Michelle had that support between me and my family. She provides hope that things were going to be okay. This is the rule of it, you know, just done. Not this um, monster that was created. Where I am today, I feel this is my purpose to be here. It's a full-time mentor. How are you today? Based on my testimony and my upbringing, that's where the real connection is I have with these kids. So if I was hating, I'm loving now. And if I was violent, now I'm peaceful, yeah. I don't want to go yet. I have a faith that the right person or the right people will come and take over. I'm still needed, I suppose. What is even better is I'm still wanted. And that's what makes me do that commute because I do make a difference in people's lives as they make a difference in mine. It's not a job that people can just do. It's a job that comes from where you come from, from where you stand today, and from the experience that you have had in life. Are you okay, darling? Aroha nui. Next time, elbow touch, please. All right. Aroha nui, aroha nui. Ai, ai, kia I go back to that same old thing. We need to listen. Listen to the people. O mai tōpō ho he piringa Tōpō ho he piringa O mai tō kiri ki a rongo atu Toki ri ki a rongo atu O mai te kupu ki a korero Tō kupu ki a korero Nā unei o, nā unei o Nā unei o, oh 